I don't think that she had a particularly good take on the American people. You know, I was reading The Fountainhead. Now, The Fountainhead is set entirely in New York City, for instance. And uh, its major characters, you know, they have one, one, you know, one, one of the major characters is a book publisher who used to be this young kid who came up from the slums. And, and uh, you know, at the end of the book, she blows up a housing project in Astoria, Queens. Uh, so, uh, which is a neighborhood that I know, and, but there's no sense in this book of New York City, you know, it, there's no authenticity. And when she, in Atlas Shrugged, when her characters go around the, uh, uh, travel around looking for John Galt and looking for this machine that he's built and all that stuff, I, I just don't get a sense of America. I, 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 this doesn't seem like America to me. The people that she portrays in this book are uh, like idiots and morons. They're not like you know. You don't you don't get a sense of the of the real America or, or any even a hint or a whiff of the real America. I think uh, in Atlas Shrugged, it's it's um, it, it, they call it a dystopian book because it looks at sort of a, you know it's set in sort of the indefinite future. But you know. The, the, the America that's presented in Atlas Shrugged is such a disgusting place. It's such a discouraging place. And you, you know, if you if you weren't familiar with Rand's record, you'd think that the person writing this book was really anti-American, really didn't like America that much, because she presents an America that isn't especially appealing, isn't especially nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can think, well, uh, maybe she she took this position out of a view that well, maybe America was distorted by its government or destroyed by its government. But I don't know. I th I think that perhaps she just didn't really like America or the American people that much, uh, because I I don't think she really relates especially well, especially well to to, to like what what you describe as ordinary people. You know, she liked moguls. She liked you know captains of industry like Henry Ford. But she didn't have much of a, of a, of a I think, a, a, of, a, of, a, of a very strong sympathetic feel toward the American people. Um, and I, I think that's, um, it disturbed me. I, I, it, it did disturb me about, about her books. You know, selflessness is, is I think, the thing that I, I sort of latched onto as I, was, as I was researching this book. You know, she was very much opposed to selflessness. She's felt that selflessness uh, was evil. I mean, those were the words that she used. She thought altruism was evil. Um, and she went on and on about this. You know, she felt that there was a virtue in selfishness. But if you look at, at, at the, and, and you know, one thing that, that you know, that um, you know, I know that frequently people in the, you know, the conservative movement frequently do, and uh, even some Randers do often, is to go back to the founders. They, they claim, and certainly I know that Rand's people claim that their philosophy, you know, really reflects the spirit of the founders. But if you look at the way the founders actually lived their lives, these were not selfless. These were not selfish people. They were entirely selfless. If you go to Mount Vernon and you look at George Washington's estate, the first thing you notice is that it's a tiny fragment of this huge estate that he used to have. And the reason for that was that George Washington had to sell off his ancestors, his, his descendants, and I think Washington also, had to sell off most of Mount Vernon to pay the, pay the tax bills because he wasn't making any money, and Washington didn't make a dime off the presidency. He didn't go into consulting. He didn't become a lobbyist. Uh, he didn't appear on Fox or whatever it is they might have had in, uh, or MSNBC, whatever it is, you know, they might have had. He didn't write a column for the New York uh, Gazette or whatever, you know, and I'm sure that he would. He didn't make a dime, and nor did his, uh, nor did Martha or uh, his stepchildren or whatever it was. I mean, the, the founders did not, were not selfish people, and I think this is the fundamental flaw. I think this is one of the fundamental flaws of, uh, of, uh, of Rand's vision is that, you know, it's contrary to the spirit, you know, not just what the, the way the founders, not just the way the founders, um, um, uh, what, what they wrote, I think they, there, there's a, there, there is a conflict with, with what they wrote in some ways, but also with the way they lived and with the kind of people that they were. They were not greedy people, although a lot of them were landed gentry and they owned slaves and all that other stuff that everybody talks about. In a fundamental way, they were selfless people. They, I mean, they, they, they did risk their lives and they believed in self-sacrifice.